Hello everyone and welcome to this video. This video was inspired by an interview recently between Ben Shapiro, who is an Orthodox Jew, and Bishop Barron, who is a Catholic priest. Now they both come with unique perspectives on the question on who goes to heaven and just general thoughts on salvation. I would like to dive into this because I am an evangelical Protestant and I found some of the responses from both of them, in particular uh, the bishop, to be intriguing and found myself agreeing with the priest quite a bit, which I wasn't expecting, being a Protestant. So I'd like to get your opinion on some of the responses you hear in this video, and I will stop the interview occasionally when an issue comes up that I want to uh, dive deeper on, and I'll call up the scripture and we'll discuss it quickly, and then we'll move on with the interview again. But I get this question a lot, which is, you know, as a Jew, how does it feel that there are other religions that don't think you're getting into heaven? So let me ask you, what's the Catholic view on who gets into heaven and who doesn't? So to answer Ben Shapiro's question directly, and this isn't really a Catholic view only, this is the Christian view because this is what Jesus actually said in the Bible. Jesus answered in John 14, 6, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And that was a rallying cry at the uh, Protestant Reformation. Grace alone, faith alone, and Christ alone. And uh, that's what we believe. Christ is the only way to the Father. He's the only mediator between God and man by which men can be saved. And, of course, John 3.16 is a pretty famous verse that even non-Christians recognize. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him, and underlining whoever believes in him, shall not perish, but have eternal life. Now, there is a distinction within Protestantism between Arminians and Calvinists. Calvinists, who believe in a limited atonement, would say that whoever is whoever Jesus specifically died for and predestined to believe in him, Arminians would say whoever is whoever. What it says, that anyone who's ever lived on the face of the earth has the opportunity to believe in Jesus and have eternal life. I feel like I lead a pretty good life, a very religiously based life in which I try to keep not just the Ten Commandments, but a solid 603 other commandments as well. And I spend an awful lot of my time promulgating what I would consider to be Judeo-Christian virtues, particularly in Western societies. So I have some bad news here for Ben Shapiro. There's numerous verses in the Bible that say it doesn't matter how many works or good deeds you do, they're always going to fall short of God's requirements for salvation, which is perfection. So we have, you know, Romans 3.23, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So again, all of us, doesn't matter how many good things we do, we eventually sin and still fall short of the glory of God. We are not perfect, nor can we be. And there's multiple places in the Bible where this is explained and emphasized. So the only way we can please the Father is for him to look at the Son's perfect life instead of our perfect life. And therefore... That goes back to the Son being Jesus and believing in Him. So, what's the Catholic view of me? Am I basically screwed here? No. The Catholic view, go back to uh, the Second Vatican Council, says it very clearly. I mean, Christ is the privileged route to salvation. I mean, God so loved the world, He gave His only Son that we might find eternal life. So, that's the, the privileged route. Paul, in Ephesians 2, chapters 8 to 9, really captures this the best. It is by grace you have been saved, through faith. And this is not from yourselves, this is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. So we can't boast like Shapiro was in the beginning, that, hey, I'm doing all these works, I'm keeping these 600-some commandments, or at least trying to. Um, we can't do that, because that's not how we're saved. And it's not by faith that we're saved. Faith is the vehicle for salvation. It is by grace you have been saved. So it's God's free, unmerited gift to us that saves us. And the way that saves us is by us receiving that gift through faith. So it is by grace that you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. So the this here is not the grace. The this here is not the faith. The this is the saved, is the salvation. So it says it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this salvation is not from yourselves. We can't save ourselves through these works that we could boast about. This salvation is not from ourselves. This salvation is the gift of God. However, Vatican II clearly teaches that someone outside the explicit Christian faith can be saved. 
Now, they're saved through the grace of Christ, indirectly received. So, I mean, the grace is coming from Christ, but it might be received according to your uh, conscience. So, if you're following your conscience sincerely, or in your case, you're following the commandments of the law sincerely, yeah, you can be saved. So, what Bishop Barron is referencing here is a section from Romans 2 by the, uh, the Apostle Paul. And what he talks about, uh, you know, in verse 12, he says, For all who have sinned without the law will also perish without the law. And all who have sinned under the law will be judged by the law. For it is not the hearers of the law who are just before God, but the doers of the law will be justified. It's a little confusing because we know that we are justified by grace through faith, as we just spoke about. But yet there's, a, there's talking about, Paul's talking about doers of the law being justified. So was he talking about under the old covenant or is he talking about today? Because he's using it in the present tense. You know, this is written uh, quite a time, quite a period of time after Jesus had uh, died and rose and ascended. So he must be talking about the New Testament period. So then we get in the 14 here. For when Gentiles, and that's just simply anyone who's not a Jew, so I would include myself in this, who do not have the law, do instinctively the things of the law, these, not having the law, are a law to themselves, in that they show the work of the law is written in their hearts, their conscience bearing witness, and their thoughts alternately accusing or else defending them on the day when, according to my gospel, God will judge the secrets of men through Christ Jesus. Let's go on with the interview and then we'll come back to it. Now, that doesn't conduce to a complete relativism. I mean, we still would say the privileged route and, and the, the route that God is, has offered to humanity is, is the route of his Son. But no, you can be saved. Uh, even Vatican II says that an atheist of goodwill can be saved because in following his conscience, if he does, John Henry Newman said the conscience is the aboriginal vicar of Christ in the soul. It's a very interesting characterization that it is, in fact, the voice of Christ. If he's the Logos made flesh, right? He's the divine mind or reason made flesh, that when I follow my conscience, I'm following him, whether I know it explicitly or not. So even the atheist, Vatican II teaches, of goodwill can be saved. Okay, here's where I start to have trouble with what the priest is saying. So he says, an atheist of goodwill, if he follows his conscience, can be saved. I know what he's saying here because, you know, this section we just read from Paul in Romans, and really Romans 1 and 2. In Romans 1, you know, Paul talks about general revelation. You know, in Romans 1, Paul writes that God has made it plain to them. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made, so that people are without excuse. So I get that. That's basically what we're saying, uh, what is known as general revelation. God's made creation. He's made nature. You can't help but see the created order of nature around us, even though it's a fallen uh, creation. It's still something that has been created that didn't come out of nothing. It's obvious just looking around. You could come to that conclusion. Uh, this general revelation, you know, it gives us knowledge of God. It renders us, quote, without excuse if we say a judgment that we didn't know there was a God. Well, he's revealed to us through this, his light of creation. But Paul goes further and says we are not only know about God from the light of, from without, out in creation, but we also know from the light from within. And I think that's what this priest, uh, Bishop Barron is trying to say is you're following the light within. Uh, Paul says, When Gentiles who do not have the law do by nature things required by the law, they are a law for themselves, even though they do not have the law. They show that the requirements of the law are written on their hearts, their consciences also bearing witness, and their thoughts sometimes accusing them, and at other times even defending them. That's in Romans 2, 14 to 15. So my problem here, though, is, you know, sometimes missionaries would go out in the jungles of Africa and find a tribe who is trying to worship God. They're worshiping what they understand is God. They, uh, you know, it may be a, a tree or it may be a statue or whatever, but they're trying to follow this internal light that's being revealed to them about the existence of God and finding, figuring out the way to do it because they haven't had the full gospel explained to them from somebody. Um, and they may have seven commandments, these seven rules, and they're actually seven of the Ten Commandments that we've seen um, that God has given us. So, I, I, again, I understand what this bishop is saying, but the thing is, these people are seeking God. They may not 
find a full revelation of him because they haven't had the gospel completely explained. But they're seeking, they're searching, they're trying. An atheist is completely rejecting God. And an atheist is beyond an agnostic who says there isn't proof one way or the other. An atheist is flat out rejecting God. So an atheist who's rejecting God and following his conscience, I just don't buy it. So is Catholicism act-based or faith-based? Because this has been sort of the traditional distinction between Judaism, for example, and Christianity, yeah. is Judaism is a very acts-based religion where it's all about what you do in this life and that earns you points in heaven. Uh, and then there's the faith-based religions that are more based on you believe in the truth, the way, and the life, and now you're in. Where, where does Catholicism actually stand, or is that division too stark? No, I, I would say it's love-based. Uh, God is love. God so loved the world, he sent his only son. We're being drawn into the divine love. Okay, I like what the bishop says here, and that we're being drawn into the divine love. This is something uh, that Arminians and Calvinists both agree that God draws us. Uh, the difference is um, Calvinists believe we are drawn against our will. We have no, we can't resist it. It's irresistible. Where uh, Minions believe God draws us in the, to a point of decision, a point of either accepting or rejecting him. Either way, um, that's what the priest is saying here. I would agree that God does draw us. We know uh, in uh, John 1 9 we are told the true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world the light from without that is the light from within and the light from within is given to everyone but so we're all drawn to him he he draws us and, and to a point of a decision at some point since I'm Romanian that's what I believe and that's how I understand what the scriptures are saying so again I, I like what he's saying here about drawing all of us are drawn, and even you know, even the atheist is still going to have a drawing that's happening to them. And you get to the question also with the Jews, um, you know, a Jewish person is going to be drawn. So all all people on this earth, God wants to be saved, wants them to be saved, and so He draws everybody at some point. Now, do we have to accept that love as an act of, of faith? Of course, right? So so God makes this great offer in Christ. Is it accepted in faith? Yeah. Aquinas says faith is the, is the door of the spiritual life. Without faith, you can't get into the spiritual life. That means a trust in the divine love. So I've decided at this point, I'm going to make this into two videos and call this part one. I'm going to wrap up part one right now. So just to quote Bishop Barron, he says, The privileged route that God has offered to humanity is the route of his son. And I can say amen to that. That, of course, matches up with there's no name under heaven by which men are saved but the name of Jesus Christ. So God's Son is not only the privileged route, he is the route, and it's a privilege to have that opportunity for all of us. So when a non-believer, a non-Christian, um, when he follows his conscience, he's actually following God, whether they know it or not. And that's something the bishop had said too, and I agree with that. But then he uses this term, the atheist of goodwill. I don't think there's such a thing. If you're an atheist, you're not trying to follow, follow God. You're not seeking him out. Now, it doesn't mean God doesn't try to seek you out as an atheist and change, change your heart and soften it and draw you towards him. No doubt about it. But at that point, you're not an atheist if you're responding to God, right? Maybe you're an agnostic at that point, and you're eventually a Christian if you respond. But I feel like this, by definition, an atheist has a hardened heart and is firm on their opinion at that moment that they don't believe in God. So there's no such thing as an atheist of goodwill. When we're talking about salvation, are there atheists that do nice things around the world? Absolutely. But when we're talking about salvation, and that's what this is about, I think the bishop is wrong to use that phrase. And apparently if he's quoting Vatican II, then I'm <laughs> in contradiction with the Pope. So... Oh, well, I guess that's what being a Protest part of being a Protestant is, right? So, uh, you know, Shapiro asked the question, is Christianity acts-based or faith-based? My answer would have been, it's grace-based. And this grace is received through faith, not acts. So I guess if pressed, I'd say it's more faith-based than acts-based. But the focus really needs to be that it's grace-based, that God is the one making the first move and offering the gift of salvation to us. It's not something we're just trying to earn on our own, whether it's by faith or by acts or by both, for that matter. 
God offers that grace, as we talked about earlier in the Ephesians chapter 2 verse. He draws us, he tugs us, tugs at our heart. And if we choose to receive that gift of salvation, then we are saved. And we will go to heaven when we die. So technically at that point, you are no longer a non-believer, right? You're a believer in Christ. However, as we've been talking about, there could be a sense that you don't have the full revelation of Christ. You're still following Christ, but you don't realize it, I guess, is a the point there. So we're going to dive in in the next video about this idea of trusting in the divine love, which is a phrase Bishop Barron used. And I like that because the word trust is very important in the Christian faith when it comes to talking about belief and faith. And even the question, is belief and is faith the same thing? So just to conclude, in summary for part one, can Jews and non-Christians go to heaven? It seems the answer is yes, if they respond in faith to God's drawing of them, which again is still through Christ, even if they don't fully understand it's him. And then as Christians, we have the benefit of having received the full light, and we actually understand what's happening when we're responding to the gospel because someone has explained it to us and we have a fuller understanding and revelation. But for that tribe in the middle of Africa, as another example, who's never had the opportunity <clears throat> to hear that gospel, they can still respond to Christ through God reaching them through their conscience. And again, they're also aware of the light from without of creation. And the light from within is that conscience, that God working directly, tugging at their hearts. All right, I hope that makes sense. I hope uh, you guys will share your thoughts about what I'm saying here in the comments below. I'd like to hear uh, how you would answer the question, can Jews and non-Christians go to heaven? And uh, I'll put a link at the end of this video for part two so we can continue the discussion there. All right, thanks all. Have a blessed day.